Hello and welcome to Sharon Local History, this time welcome to town of Stoughton. This is building of Stoughton Historical Society which is located on 6 Park Street and on October 22nd the Society offered very interesting presentation led by David Lambert. David is town and tribal historian so he gave amazing presentation on how the Massachusetts Native Americans at Ponkapoak sold, in quotes, their land. Um, David discussed the early history of the families and the land at Ponkapoak Plantation. I was able to record small parts of the presentation and um, I just would like to share those with you. However, if you would like to hear the whole talk, you should contact Dave. This is uh, President of Stoughton Historical Society, Dwight, and a few guests that came. It was a very lovely gathering with people chatting beforehand and getting to know the speakers. And then we were listening to um, the President and his talk and afterwards Dave had his presentation. And the second half of this video is presentation by Thomas Green. So I hope you can enjoy the parts. We do our share to uh, share the positive and the negative, and I'm sure today with the, the program of the Unified Native Americans, we're going to hear some of both. Uh, if you're following things on Facebook and getting a newsletter, you know more or less what's been going on here. Uh, so David uh, has a, I, I let David introduce himself and his history with the uh, with the tribe and other things, but uh, just I appreciate David being here and David so much. Well, I'm absolutely delighted to see it turn out, especially when it's a hint of blue sky outside, not knowing how much will happen. Uh, delighted to have uh, everyone here, especially my dear friend, Spirit Tree Tom Green, who will lead after the conclusion of my lecture, who is a member of the Travel Council of the Massachusetts Trumpet. Uh, I also recognize some folks who Sharon, some I've never met before, except for virtually, so I'm delighted to see you. Um, what I'm going to do at the beginning, before my talk, is something important, especially if you have Stoughton roots. Raise your hand if you have a connection with Stoughton before 1953. All right, if, if you were born before 1953, this may be even more interesting to you. Say, for instance, if you got uh, pinched for riding your bicycle on the sidewalk by one of our cops when you were 10 years old, and it was in the old Stoughton News Central, guess what? It's now all online. So Dave gave us a little presentation on how to access the digital newspapers. I created a separate short video. These are fantastic resources and I highly recommend using them. So before I get started, another dear friend, Craig Tegersky, who is a descendant of Alfred Proud, a member of the Punk Club Travel Council, is in the back. I would love him to come forward and get a seat and not have to stand in the back of the room. Because I know you're younger than me, but your eyes aren't that good. This is Thomas Green, who is a member of Massachusetts tribe at Ponkapoak, and he made additions to Dave's presentation. Yes, yes, I just want to point out that this map depicts what the indigenous population looked like after European intervention. <coughs> Prior to European intervention, this map was different because well, between 1616 and 1619% of Massachusetts were wiped out by smallpox. Yeah. So a lot of things got moved around after that. Uh, yeah, no, please, and at any point, please yeah. jump in. Yeah. Absolutely. So Moss Wetusin is not one word, it's the description, it's three words. Moss means grand, grave, or lodge. We too are the summer dwellings that the Massachusetts lived on in the summertime when they were not, like, close to the ocean. And set just means it's a place. So to put it together, Moss Wetusin means the place of the big house, uh, the governor's mansion, the White House. This is where Chickatawba lived during the summertime. This was his week. This is where he lived. And it's a bow and arrow. Uh, I just okay. want to say that that also was the mark of the squaw station. She, she was actually the person who the had to deal with. Right, right. But in any case, that was her mark, and that mark was significant 
um, just like what Dave was talking about with the symbolism and stuff earlier. Well, first, she didn't want the English to know her name. So nobody knows what her real name was. Uh, but this mark is a bow in an ad with an arrow pointed upward, which means he's ready to fight for what's his. And he's ready to defend his people and what he believes is, you know, belongs to him. So that's a, that's a, a very strong mark uh, when it comes to the symbolism that was used by the indigenous because they didn't understand. A lot of them weren't, uh, they didn't know English. They didn't know how to read it. They didn't know how to write it. Some of them didn't know how to speak it. Just, just want to um, make a correction here. There's no, there were Ponkabog Indians. There were Indians at Ponkabog. Ponkabog was a place that went in the, 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 the indigenous population that went to the frame town of Ponkabog were Massachusetts. That's why they ranged far and wide because prior to the European intervention, they ranged far and wide. They weren't subjugated to be in one place if they wanted to be safe. If they wanted to be safe, they needed to be now, yep. I just want to say that one of the reasons for all these leases is because at the time, Hong Kong uh, proper still belonged to the indigenous folks. And the way that the Dorchester prior, excuse me, the way that Wampatuck insisted that the Dorchester proprietors treat this man is that it could not be bought, sold, or given away in any legal manner or fashion. Um, a Hong Kong Indian did try to sell this man then he would forfeit his stake in that thing. So this is one of the reasons for these leases, because the land, it was illegal to actually buy it. He couldn't, it was too legal land. Craig, this young man right here, because of longer generations, his great-grandfather was born in 1847, served in the 5th Mass Cavalry. We've all heard of the 55th and the 54th Mass, just the 5th Mass Cavalry was a Native American and African American cavalry unit. And he actually went, his great-grandfather went to Texas and fought as a buffalo soldier. Yes, his great-grandfather, who had a child in 1914, and he was on his third marriage. And that was his grandfather. Yes, sir. Because I want to be done, I'm not going to have a lot of time to talk, so I just want to, that's why I can think about doing this. But there's a side story about her. She's pissed off, so her name is being taxed. They don't need to kind of take it. She didn't have money to pay the tax. So her answer to that problem was to climb to the top of the state house steps, take the first skirt, and handle her business. Step in and she was. She didn't like anyone but talks to you. <laughs> and I am so grateful to have Thomas and Craig here. And by all means, please both talk. I want you to tell them that no one is extinct. That you're alive and well. You all have children. In fact, Craig lives right here in Stone, so the original settlers of our town, his family were the original people of this town, and are going to be involved in the 300th celebration of this community because we date back before 1726. And then at the end, glad to answer questions. Thank you so much. And please come. No, it's more dramatic like this. When we would walk, we used to walk down the stream. Massachusetts turned to walk, we used to walk, and she walked with her. New Chief Penoa in the Ponset, Massachusetts, on the walk. So what I just said is, good afternoon, my name is Tom Green. My name is the Massachusetts Language of Spirit Tree. I descend from the Neponset Band of Massachusetts. Gathered in Hong Kong. So, first, it's just a little something I was talking about um, earlier when Dave was talking about Hong Kong. Now, as far as historical documentation are concerned, yes, I connect to and descend from the Hong Kong Indians. So, as we all know, none of us were Indians. Some of us was just a dumbass and didn't know where he was. That being said, um, Ponkapog was a place, not a people. It was originally the place where the Nepont Band of Massachusetts would uh, make their winter camp, and it would have been Stoughton, Canton, Milton, Randolph, Cotton Rock, and that entire general area is where the Nepont Band Station ship and those that were part of that station ship would go to there. Um, the 
help. Again, like the word Martha Tuesday, it um, was like the big house or the, the place where the big guy lived. Um, the word Massachusetts is also not a word. It is also a description. Okay, Moss means great man, big or large. I chew means hill, or not except means place. Place of the great hill. And it's referring to the great hill of North, and which of course everyone knows is the largest um, you know, point in the Great Boston area. Uh, now the Massachusetts got the name that they got because Northeast were many indigenous folks were seasonally migration. It would be on the ocean and in the harbor and the harbor islands during warmer months. And during the winter months, when it's colder, they would seek protection on the other side of the Great Mountain. So because they migrated back and forth, they were also referred to as the Massachusetts. Uh, when the English came here, the Massachusetts that were, uh, well, the Neponset man, anyways, Chicken Pilots, Massachusetts, were very quickly, uh, pretty much relegated to the Pontiac area. Um, it's, just so you guys understand, that at the time, it was all seed of swamp. It was an area that the English couldn't have imagined them, themselves wanting to be in. Um, and it also created a buffer between uh, the English Puritans that were here and what they considered to be still the wild frontier, the savages that weren't Christianized, who did not want to become Christianized. Um, so the, I just really wanted to clarify those couple of things. And I mean, here again, you can see uh, in the image here, you have Beauty and John Crow, you have their daughter, Mabel, Mabel's daughter, Viola, Viola's daughter, Alice. Alice had a daughter named Moran, who is the, medicine, the current medicine sage of the Massachusetts tribe in my mom. So this is, um, this is my, my family all the way back to uh, the census at Mount Carl, the Earl Report. Um, and then you can find uh, some bits of my family also within the writings of Plan 2. Um, I'm not sure if you want to say anything, Craig, but I definitely like to give you an opportunity to come prepared and say a few words. Uh, this is Craig Podgersky. Uh, he's also a member of the Massachusetts tribe at Pontypog and of our tribal council. Um, would you like to say anything? Uh, <laughs> so also, I, I noticed that uh, at one point in time, Dave had referred to our language. Um, now, prior to the indigenous people at Pontypog being in prison on the Harbor Islands because the English were afraid we were going to King Philip's War, we were also in prison on the Harbor Islands prior to that because we were in the town of Boston and we were speaking our language. And the Puritans that were there did not know what we were saying and they were suspicious. They were suspicious enough to have Captain Thomas Swift take all of the men from Hong Kong and imprison them on here on Long Island. And they stayed there for two years until uh, the Apostle John Elliot intervened and um, asked for us to, to, to be released from the island. When That's when uh, Captain Tom Smith Swift removed the Pong Frog from uh, Long Island and uh, brought them to Brush Hill in Milton, where they were in prison for another year. But, uh, when they were on the Harbor Island, half of the people that were brought there died because there was nothing to eat. It was just horrible to leave Christian. Um, at least when they were in Milton, they were allowed to plant some gardens so they Feed themselves, and then after a year of being at Milton, um, John Elliott got involved again, and the people that were being invisible were allowed to repair their homes on the farm. So it's the Massachusetts that gathered at Ponca Park. Um, and I, I say this jokingly, but realistically, my ancestors were given a choice, right? Would die. Uh, the only good Indian to the care of them back then was that even if you were Christianized and trying to assimilate to the English way of life, you still weren't to be trusted. Um, you still were risking your life and leaving the boundaries that were set uh, at Hong Kong. Um, but at that being said, um, my ancestors decided to assimilate. And because they decided to assimilate to the English way of life, I'm standing before you. Um, because of the fact that uh, the Apostle John Elliot endeavored to assimilate my ancestors into Christianity, a language 
that unfortunately died with the late Clint Whitson. Um, this was a language that he learned from family members of mine um, on the Indian Lane that were really on Indian Lane when he was a child. So he learned it as a, he, he learned it traditionally in the way that my ancestors of the book, anyone you know learns my language is passed down um, from generation to generation secretly. But he learned the language, uh, unfortunately, when he was around, I was probably about 10 or 11 years old, uh, maybe 12 years old, when he passed. And uh, I wanted to play Nintendo, Chase I could hear if I wasn't interested. <laughs> uh, but I wholeheartedly regret not learning something from him because with him died a language in its living form. He said, there's a guttural sound, for instance, that uh, sounds it's between the G and the K, kind of, kind of like the blues honky. I just don't, I don't have the capability. Uh, but that being said, with the assistance of the Bible that John Elliott used to assimilate my answer, we reverse engineered that uh, with the help of an uh, anthropological linguist. I've been relearning our language, and if he doesn't want to say anything, I'm going to say something for him. Harry Potter is one of the major components of that um, language. He's been a dedicated member of our tribe language reclamation committee for the last three and a half years and actively uh, teaches and gives workshops to the rest of the tribe members that do not participate directly in the language reclamation committee. So I just want to say thank you to that, for that because he's actually bringing back our language so that, and not only that, he just had a daughter, his first uh, child, teaching her Massachusetts the one in Massachusetts as a first language in English as a second language. That's something that I'm proud of and I just wanted to mention that uh, before I sat down. Other than that, thank you everybody for listening to what I have to say. Thank you for listening to the I'm a very good member of our tribe uh, since my early childhood. Uh, I grew up listening to Dave tell me stories. So we all learned a lot and I would like to thank to Stoughton Historical Society for extending their invitation to public. I would like to thank Dave, uh, Thomas and Craig for reminding us that we should remember the first families of the Americas today and we should always remember their legacy and respect all descendants. Um, they did a fantastic job. We all had a chance afterwards to chat with very artsy Thomas and admire his creations. He made these himself. Um, it was a lovely gathering. I would like to thank Stoughton Historical Society for amazing snacks and a great chats with everybody. Stoughton Historical Society is very active. They have tons of work to do to preserve Stoughton history and they will always welcome new members. So please feel free to join them, reach out and join them for future talks or activities. Here are ladies who didn't want Thomas to leave. <laughs> um, and um, for more information, you can check out their website and you can join for any of their activities. They are usually open to public. So I would like to thank you all for watching this video and uh, you can uh, view more different videos at the Sharon Local History Channel, as I mentioned. I made a short video when, where Dave is explaining how to find the digitized newspapers. So thank you for watching Sharon Local History. <laughs>